uh, as far as posture is concerned with, with the baton, um, I'm not a, a huge advocate of, of, of uh, a, start, a static stance because you've got to be mobile. Because the reality is, fights are not static. You're not going to have a, 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 an opponent standing stationary and you standing stationary and hitting him while he, he bees a good bad guy for you. Okay, you've, um, the, the reality is there's going to be movement involved. And so if you're not training how to move and hit, then you're training yourself to fail essentially because that's not how the fight's going to look. So um, essentially um, I, what I like to do is um, divide footwork and mobility and actual uh, weapon manipulation and then combine them back together. Because if you try and throw them both at someone and they haven't done it before, it can be a little, little much. So you work on one fundamental, get that down, progress to mobility. Exactly. Okay, and yeah. I restate this because there's a lot of people who watch the video that, I'm sorry, they just won't absorb it. That's gonna be your, so. that's gonna be your primary training, training uh, methodology is exactly. Isolate okay. and then combine um, so you can build that, uh, the ability to move without thinking about the movement. Because if you're thinking about what the hands and the feet are doing, it's gonna be too much. You need to be able to be yeah. comfortable enough that you can just move and worry about um, t target acquisition and, and not thinking about what am I doing here. Um, and that's kind of getting to that muscle memory, okay. bypassing the whole OODA cycle. So are you gonna show the strikes first off and then add in footwork? Yes. Okay, Okay. so uh, for our strike techniques, um, I like to bring the weapon up to the shoulder loader position. Um, this position here keeps my, in a, I'm a, it's a defense, just like a boxer. A boxer's gonna have their hands up and not down. And with this here, I'm in a position where I can deliver my strongest strike, my number one angle, but I've also got my hand in a protected position so if things get close and ugly, I've got the ability to protect myself. Okay. So my hands are high, and from this position, my two primary strikes are going to be, and this is a very common philosophy, is going to be my triangular or X type uh, motion. Yeah. We, we, we would generally call a number one angle and a number two angle. Number one angle coming from my dominant side, coming straight down into the, into the, uh, into the uh, target. Coming down here, and my number two angle would come over from my left shoulder or, or support side shoulder, um, where I'm coming down into the bag more into this angle. Coming right through here, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. So those are going to be my nice. primary angles. How hard is that to defend against, just that, um, if you're against a guy that does not have a baton? The only way to really defend against an attack of that nature is to get out or get in. Um, you got to get out of range because there's no way you can block that and not get hurt with your, with your body. Yeah, I mean, if you've got someone who's got power in, in his practice, like you said, and you said that off camera, how important it is to have a lot of power in those hits, like you just had. It's power, speed, precision. Um, Being able to hit with your target. Timing. Because I can have all the power and speed in the world, but if I can't hit what I'm trying to hit, it doesn't count for anything. So I've got to have that timing and precision also. So no, definitely kind of like shooting a gun. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's um, it's uh, uh, you know you can't miss fast enough to win. That's so, correct. So hmm. um, Let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking about defending against it. So he's either got to get out of range, or he's going to close, close and grapple. Up. Exactly. Close and, and, and like wrap you up with a baton, or try to take it from you. Precisely, because all the power for this baton is in this last you know six inches here. Um, the, the, cl the closer you get into my shoulder, the less power is involved. So if you're able to get inside and es effectively jam that attack or wait till I've gone past, move out and then get in and jam at this side, yeah. then that's, that's how you're going to be able to defend the, the, the baton. So you've got to get out, just like a, the, the whole hurricane philosophy. You're either, you're either in the middle or you're outside, yeah. but there's that whole danger zone that you want to avoid. Nice. Okay, so that's a strike. Uh, any tips on when they practice that strike? Um, yeah. uh, a defensive tactics bag or what? Uh, that's well, what I do, but I'm not practicing my movement when I do well, that. Number one, make sure you're hitting, hitting, hitting um, correct meaning. Um, you want to hit, this is what we call the secondary knuckles, and you want to make sure that the strike surface is above that. If I'm hitting like a tennis racket, there's a lot more chance that that's going to pop out of the hand. Um, or if I'm hitting like a backhand tennis racket strike, I'm hitting against the weak part of my grip. So you always want to turn so that all that energy is going towards the web of the hand. So that's the first thing is when I'm doing a one, strike here, number two, strike here. It's almost as if I was using a blade. If I was yeah. using a knife, I'd have to do the same thing, otherwise I'd be slapping with the side of that blade. So the philosophy actually transfers over to my knife fighting. Um, additionally, um, as far as training tools, um, you know, the, some of the simplest tools are some of the best. One, one of my favorite training um, tools is very cheap, is a stack of tires. You put a post in the ground, stack tires on it, and then hit, rub the, 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 um, hit the tires. If you, don't, if you don't have the space or the room to, do, to put a whole stack of tires, you can hang one tire from a tree, and that movement is gonna force you to have a little bit more precision on a moving target, and practice hitting the tire 
um, as it's moving, uh, one hanging tire. Nice. And um, those are the, not. And when you do it, don't just stand there and hit, because that's good. You know, you may, maybe do that to warm up and start off with, but then you start moving and st staying out of range and then stepping in and hit. Because in the reality of a fight, I don't want to stand here and train, especially if I'm targeting large muscle groups like the legs. If he threw a punch at me, it's the same distance, even though I have a baton. If I was, if he had his hand up, okay, then I can stay a little bit more distance and stay out of reach of his, his arm. But if I'm not targeting areas like the legs, a large, large target, I'm in punch range. So um, I want to make sure that I'm, uh, I don't want to stand here and trade flows, but I want to practice staying out of range because my advantage now is my reach. So I want to stay out of range and then have the ability to move in, engage, and then stay engaged or disengage and look for another opportunity to strike again. So I want to be able to stay out and then look for the opportunity to move in and get in and then protect myself the whole time. Because remember, he's not going to be a standing there. He's going to be trying. There's a good chance that the reason I'm hitting him is because he's trying to hurt me. And so um, I need to be defensive at the same time I'm, I'm, I'm facilitating my offense. Okay, so you're going into the second part, the mobility then. Mobility, exactly. Okay. They all go hand in hand. Okay, now fancy foot drills will be forgotten. They just will. By Guys, how about breaking it down? So you talked about the, in, the importance of the strike. Yes. Then we're talking about foot footwork. Yes. Uh, what is simple? Something that they can and, take and, away and use. Okay, so, and the idea of the footwork is to train it so that it will be forgotten. You want to be able to train it to forget it. And yeah. So that's just happening. Um, but essentially, one of the fundamental footworks that you can utilize is, is a simple, we call a shuffling motion. The key to shuffling, uh, shuffling motions is going to be an open-close motion, meaning, I, first of all, I don't want to stand with my feet narrow, I don't have no balance here. I don't want to be too wide, I have no mobility. So I want to be in about 45 degree position, if I'm facing this way, about a 45 degree position. If this foot starts coming back, and that takes my weapon side away, and now I've got more distance to strike what I'm trying to hit. So I need to bring this leg up, okay, 45 degree position, and the reason why I don't have this weapon in front, if I was fighting weapon versus weapon, or like knife, knife fighting, then I, I, I actually will put my weapon side forward. But if I'm weapon versus mono weapon, then his best defense is going to be to grab this, so I'm using this side to protect it. At the same time, if I'm a law enforcement officer, I need to be able to protect my weapon. Right. So from here, from this position, a shuffle footwork would be shuffle in, and all I'm doing is an open-close motion. Open-close, open-close. You want to start it fairly static, and then you want to be able to move quickly. Open-close, open-close. And so the open and close with the feet. I can do lateral motions, open-close, so I'm zoning, pivot, okay? Open-close, pivot. Okay, so stepping and pivoting. So that, and that pivoting helps you get offline. So open-close, to change distance forward, open close, move back sideways and sideways. Okay, so you're achieving maximum stability with that stance at all times. Yes, and the, and the, and this footwork is for making subtle changes in proximity um, to the opponent. For big changes, I wouldn't. If, if the guy I was fighting was across the room, I wouldn't shuffle across the room like that. So this is for Common subtle, sense, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So this is for making subtle changes in distance and proximity. Okay, let's do this. Maybe Alan, if you can put your bag back on. Okay, what we're going to have Alan do is give him two strikes, yep. a primary, secondary, or the X, and then I'm going to have him close to take your weapon away and show how you would, uh, the importance of maybe, I don't know, not walking backwards. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll show first of all the, the bad, what, what would happen if I walked back. Okay. Okay, so. Sounds good. And, so and we're going to just right. say Alan's a really committed bad guy. Okay, okay, baton or no baton, he's going to get you. So let's say he takes two hits miraculously and he can keep going. Yep. We'll simulate that. That's realistic. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do two strikes, ready? Okay. okay so we'll come over here so we have more real estate for you. Okay. okay, that was not, don't walk backwards. Exactly. And actually it would be worse because what happened is you'd probably fall over and he'd be on top of you, right? Precisely. Okay, good, we had that obstacle in the way. Okay, ready?